All right, Wake of Eden, how you doing, buddy? Um, you know, by the way, man, you chose a, a beautiful username. It's it's so poetic, Wake of Eden. Um, it even just the sound of it is it is beautiful. It's a and conceptually it's beautiful. It's a, just a great name, man. Poetic, poetic, uh, and that's a good thing. Um, so I promised you a video on uh, my to explaining my transition or telling the story of my transition from atheism to agnosticism. So this is that video. Um, you know, there's a, a there are a lot of grade dated um, uh, definitions of atheism and agnosticism, and some people maintain that they're the same, and and some people don't. Um, uh, I, I think there's a difference, uh, at least the way I conceive them. My family, I was raised in an atheist family, uh, and they were adamant atheists. I guess what is fashionable now to call um, um, hard atheism, that was the brand. New and improved. Um, they they, uh, they uh, believed that they believed that there was no God, you know. Um, myself, the, what I believe in, and so I'll attach the label agnostic, I don't like labels anyway, but I'll attach the label agnostic to myself. Where, where, where I stand is, um, I, ni I, ni I neither or neither believe there's a God nor disbelieve there's a God. I leave that open. I, I really don't know. Um, and uh, I'd rather just leave my mind open on, on the subject as to whether there's a creator God or not. Um, in any event, my family was adamant, you know, there is no God. And it was a multi-tiered, or, or maybe it's better to say uh, multi, uh, there was no vertical, or there, it's not really tiered, or there's no verticality to it, more as mosaical uh, sort of arguments, you know. Uh, one was that, uh, there were a couple moral arguments. One moral argument was that if, if there were a, a God who is just, then um, that God would just not permit um, the suffering and abuse of children, uh, you know. Uh, so if there is a God, God is unjust, and it's it's invalid to say that, that God is just. And they didn't go beyond, you know, they didn't come up with mystical reasons to, to explain that. It was just, no, we reject this, you know. Um, the other was that the, the universe is so awesomely huge, you know, that, um, uh, you know, for us to think that we were so important uh, as to be made in the image of God just seemed like complete arrogance. Arrogance on a, a universal scale. Narcissism on a universal scale. So, um, you know, later on, uh, by the way, just to digress, um, I really concluded that, um, that the type of atheism that, that, that existed in my family was really sort of an anti-Catholicism. Um, rather than something that stood independently. But but parts of it were not anti-Catholicism. Parts of them were just anti-religion in general. But um, in any event, uh, I just want to note that sort of strain that runs through it. Um, they also had a physical argument. They, they really believed in the physical universe and, um, and that um, they didn't believe in anything beyond the physical. So the idea was that, you know, hey, we've gone into outer space. We haven't found God, so, so he doesn't exist. Um, that was basically the philosophical basis of it. So, um, when so I was raised that way. When I was about fourteen, though, I decided I was gonna I was gonna just intellectually uh, establish for myself through intellectual argument that God did not exist. You know, um, so I actually went. I was in school at the time. I think it was lunchtime. I went up to the gymnasium up in the bleachers. I was up at in the upper level of bleachers, basically just doing some hard thought. You know, to uh, to uh, to to, to resolve the issue once and for all, you know, through the pure power of reason. Um, <clears throat> so I, I took the physical argument first, um, putting the moral arguments and the psychological arguments aside, uh, and decided, uh, well, let's look at it physically. You know, the, the universe is, is governed by physical laws, and, and if God exists, he's huge, and that much gravity is not going to allow him to... Uh, that much gravity is just not, he would collapse under, under his own gravity, you know, so I rejected that. And then it occurred to me, well, and I think these are some of the best insights when you see the limitations of your thought and you see assumptions that you've, you've been making that um, you, you didn't realize, you were unconscious of these assumptions, you, you didn't realize you were making them. So I then realized, well, well, I'm assuming that uh, everything in the universe must have physical properties so and then it then occurred to me well now if there's a creator God who created the universe wouldn't he really be free from that I mean if that's something he created couldn't he be free from matter or, or 
you know, basically constituted of some other sort of substance that, that didn't have physical properties, um, which, you know, perhaps some people would call that spirit, I don't know, but, but some uh, rarefied substance, well, I don't know if it's rarefied or not, but some substance that, that, that isn't bound by the laws of physics. Uh, then it struck me that um, to truly create the whole universe, maybe that goes beyond just the physical universe, um, what if one of the created things was, what if that was the very logic and the very reason that I'm using to, to analyze this? In other words, what if a creator God exists and created reason and created logic? Um, it, it's a very disturbing thought, and in fact, it still um, disturbs me today. Um, but I couldn't deny it as a thought, and the validity of it as a thought, and as a question, is a perfectly valid question. What if, what if reason and logic are created? You know, what if uh, they're not underlying? What if all of mathematics is just? What if all of this is just a habit of the universe? What if it's a uh, what if it's a temporary state of affairs and there's a creator God who decides to change it, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I realized then that if that is true, um, I could not approach an understanding of the divine through reason and through logic. Not necessarily. Maybe I could. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, the depth of the role played by, by these particular tools, you know? Um, I don't. I still don't. Uh, they're mysterious. Um, I have, a, I have a great deal of, uh, I rely on them a, a great deal, but um, I don't know. I don't know their, their basic nature. Uh, but in any event, um, maybe it was impossible even to approach the divine through reason and through logic. So that was stunning, um, stunning. And I, I really realized that um, having, you know, I mean, I had to just, to preserve intellectual integrity, I had to admit that those were valid questions. So, really, I could no longer call myself an atheist, at least not the type of atheist as it was defined in my family, you know, a, a disbelief in God. I had to allow for the possibility that a creator God could, uh, could exist and might exist. Um, and later on then also, I, um, I started to, to think about the nature of time and whether, um, you know, time time was also something that uh, a divine being could be beyond space and time. And we, we, we do, our science uh, considers them to be woven together as, as different aspects of one phenomenon. So, you know, even cause and effect kind of falls to the ground. And when cause and effect falls to the ground, you know, um, well, I have to think about that. What's the relation of cause and effect to logic? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, in any event, I realized I couldn't really call myself at, uh, at, an atheist. So, I've gone with the term agnostic because really, uh, it really means not knowing. Um, uh, so, I don't know. I really don't know uh, whether there's a creator God or not. Um, uh, and I don't know whether we can know. I don't even know that. I mean, whether we can even know. Uh, um, because that gets into questions of what is knowledge, you know. So, uh, so can we know? I don't know. And then, if we can know, can we know fully? I don't know. So that is the story. I took a lot of heat in my family. You know, they totally misunderstood what I said. You know, when when I tried to explain um, that I considered myself an agnostic because I didn't know whether. Uh, a creator God exists or not, the way they interpreted that was that I believed in God, you know. So I took a lot of heat um, from the family on that one, uh, and I don't think they ever really understood what I was saying, but that's okay. I mean, you know how families can be. All right, take it easy, buddy. It's good talking to you. Take care. Bye-bye.